Greetings, sisters and brothers. It's Teela here with Children of the Serpent. Welcome to another video. And I just want to say thank you guys for we reached 100 subscribers. That is awesome. And I want to show my appreciation. So I'm going to be answering some questions I recently received. Let's get into them. The first one is by Sebastian Green. He's our follower on our Facebook page. And he was wondering... If I'm a spiritual type of Satanist, should I be an enemy of someone who follows Anton LaVey? Well, no, most definitely not. We should work together as we can learn from each other. Labels are limitations. That is it. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. And you can do everything that you want. You can believe whatever you want. Don't let someone say this is how it is because it's only up to you how it is. I think we all should bring all different types together and learn from each other and then we grow and evolve as a whole. That's just my opinion. Next one is um, by Luce, Lilith Luce Medusa, might be having it a little bit off and it's in two regards of am I, is it okay for me to work with angels even though I am on a left hand path or a Satanist? My, my answer is yes, you can work with angels. Now, let me kind of explain what angels are. I got an itch. <laughs> so, angels, in my, based off my research, they are nothing more than thought forms. So, the word angel comes from the Greek meaning messenger. And then the symbology, like the image we see of angels, actually comes from the Romans. Um, so, and then the actual names, like such, such as Michael or Ariel, these are all angels that were created within the Abrahamic faith. Like they're Jewish in origin, Islamic or Christian. There's not there's nothing that suggests suggests that they are older or ancient. Um, and this is why I said they are thought forms because they are created from the Abrahamic faith, and then this energy has been pre-programmed to act in a certain way. Now there are many people who work with angels and they're like they're light beings, they work miracles. I think thought forms are tricks or spirits. So I think my only thing I suggest, if you do choose to work with an angel, be mindful. Don't be so trusting. And make sure you know your boundaries with them. Make sure this is how it's going to be. So that way they ain't trying to play around. And they also, the only type of offering you need to make an angel, and they will tell you this too, is your energy. And that's because they're a thought form. Thought forms need your energy to continue to live. They need your thoughts, your process of them. Otherwise they cease. It's like creating a... Severator, you need to remember, like, take a, once a week and uh, think about them and put your energy into them. It's the same type of ordeal. Um, and then you can call upon a different angel. I suggest an evocation, not an invocation, because an invocation is more personal and that will put more of attachment to you. So I wouldn't do that. I would personally advise an invocation. Um, and then, God, I got a lot of itching going on <laughs> in my nose. I got allergies. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the ev evocation, they will manifest, like you can use a lot of insets, so they might see some type of coloring or some type of visual. You can use mirrors, you can use a crystal ball. These all will all work um, when doing an invocation with an angel. And these angels, um, you can just find different properties like you do with herbs. Like this one can be used for this, this can be used for this. Take that in mind, um, What you want to, how you want to work with the angel. And, again, just be mindful of what you're doing and don't be tricked by them. And just keep in mind, they are there to suck on your energy. So they may want to keep that continuous relationship with you. So if you try to break them, sometimes they can get nasty. Um, but you can always banish them. It's, they're not as powerful, not near as powerful as a demon or an ancient god. So you do have more type of power or control. I'm not saying disrespect any type of thought form, spirit, or anything. I'm just saying you have more power than you realize when it comes with an angel than you ever will with any other probably type of spirit. Because even human spirits, I, would, I wouldn't say they're stronger, but they kind of are because if a human spirit or a consciousness it, you had a physical existence before, it doesn't need to exist just because you think of it, unlike an angel does. Um, that's just my opinion. If you have something else to say, that's okay. Um, and then... Oh yeah, it was Miss Lisa. She was wondering how to dedicate yourself to Satan. So the way I suggest is create your own ritual. 
you can do a simple invocation. So do your research. How, why do you want to do this dedication? What is it about that you believe who Satan is? And bring that into your invocation part. Like you can just say, um, I invoke Satan, Lord of the Earth. Um, and then you can bring that, the, like, characteristics or the serpent god or whatever you associate him with into your invocation. And then you write a personal prayer. Um, however, you, this needs to be up to you. Like, I cannot even give you a guideline for the prayer. This needs to be coming from your heart, something that you truly are passionate about. Like, that's a true self-sacrifice of your time. And then at the end, I also suggest um, offering blood and sexual juices. Both of them is the most powerful um, offering, if you ask me. You can do one or the other, though. If you don't want to do both, it's up to you. And then you just put it on the piece of paper. You wrote the prayer on it. You burn the paper. Meditate. Close it if you want. Some people like to leave their rituals open. Um, when I close a ritual, I don't... I say... <laughs> I say, you're always welcome to come back or you're always welcome to stay, but farewell for now or something like that. Something that to me is respectful so it's not like a full on like type of clothes, get out. It's like just say, you're welcome to stay if you like or you can go if you want. That's just the way I am. Um, and then the next question was by Michael and he was wondering about portals. So a portal is anything that's an opening to a dimension or some call it a spiritual plane, but there's different ways you can open them. So an altar in itself can actually open up a portal because it has spiritual significance. It has energy that's been put into it. Um, any type of ritual you do, that's going to be an opening. If you call upon a spirit, a god, demon, angel, whatever you're doing, you're opening up a portal. It's like someone comes knocking on your door and are you going to leave them outside or are you going to invite them in? And this is what we're doing. We're opening the door to let them in. So that's how that kind of works. Um, there's different ways. You can also do it through what are called gate keys. Um, the Necronomicon or the Grimoire of Tiamat kind of goes into this. Different sigils you can do. You can write these on your wall. Um, you can do path work. Path work is definitely a gate opener. Like... <laughs> That is what you're going into, like, to meet, like, your spirit animal or speak with a type of spirit. It's, like, astral work. And if you're doing astral work, you're opening up a portal. They're not, like, it's not this crazy, elaborate thing to open one. So I may say this, and then there's another technique you can do, which is simply a visualization. You visualize an energy vortex. It could be a color if you want, or it can just be white. Whatever, it doesn't matter. And you visualize it for, like, 30 minutes. You can do that for a series of time, and then you are opening portals. And a lot of portals open by themselves. Like certain energies people put into their home. Um, I know there are some people that like to go into like cleanse the homes, or whatever, because they're saying there's portals. I don't. I like to leave portals open. I like my visitors. It's okay. Um, but that's up to you. So you can close them back up. Closing them back up, you can just visualize the portals close, or you can. Do a banishing ritual if you want. There's different things you can do for that. And then, what was the... Oh, yes. My Mr. John, he was asking about the best money spell. So, this depends on what you're wanting. Are you wanting to have an interview? Like, you're trying to get a new job? Are you wanting a promotion? Are you on a commission-type-based job that you need those cells? That's how you choose your money spell. So... Um, something I personally did is when I was, because of course you still have to apply for the jobs, you got to put the physical work and then the magic is just a booster to help and give you a vantage point. And what I did is I used the magic square that was associated with um, prosperity and careers um, and then I created my little sigil. I put the sigil on, taped onto the bottom of my shoe and I went into interviews and every interview I went into I actually got the job offer. So I do think it's helpful because it's programmed energy from yourself. Um, other things you can do is like carry around an alligator's tooth. Like believe it or not, that attracts good luck or have a four clover leaf or throw cash onto your altar. Anything you can do will can help with your thing. It's incantations. Part of it can even be a placebo effect. Um, yeah, it's not. I don't really have one that I would say is the best. If you're really wanting to look into different ways, I would suggest Hoodoo. Hoodoo has some of the best spells you can do, in my opinion. 
anyways, that is it. Thank you guys for watching, and you have a good day. Darkest blessings, and hell Satan.